thank God for all the testimonies. Come on and give our conductor a hand praise on tonight. Amen. 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 I thank God for just another day of life. I thank God for waking up on this side. Amen. Didn't wake up dead. Amen. I thank God that I woke up breathing. Amen. Amen. I thank God for my leaders, Apostle, Lady Rogers, my wife, Lady Brigham. Everything is just going well in my life. Amen. Amen. It's no matter. It it doesn't matter what things look like. I call those things well. Amen. 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 And when you call them well, you can deal with them a little better. You, it just depends on your mentality, how you look out for things. Amen. But I don't let life tackle me. I take life one day at a time and handle it. Amen. But I thank God for just the, the, what he put inside me, what I've learned since I've been at this ministry. Thank God for my upbringing. I thank God for how everything in my life just went the way it went. Some things in my life I know I caused on my own, but it still made me a better man than I am today. Amen. Because some of the things, what I did, I learned from my mistakes. See, some things you, uh, 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 you can't learn except through a lesson. Some things. Now, some things that you don't want to put yourself in because God will give you a lesson anyway. But some things you're not going to learn except through a lesson. Amen. We're going to do our scripture text. Amen. Second Corinthians 13 and 5. We all know it, right? We should already, we should pretty much have it memorized by now. Amen. On three, we're all going to read Second Corinthians 13 and 5. One, two, three. Examine yourself whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own self, how would you be a Christ is in you. Except ye be virtual mates. All right. Amen. And on tonight, we're going to talk about are you in the faith? What's happening is we, we're quoting this, but we need to understand it. Sometimes people will just get to a point where they start quoting the scripture and it just become a, 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 a say, a, a just something we quote instead of breaking the scripture down and finding out when you examine yourself, what are you examining? Are you just examining my coming to church? Are you just examining, am I wearing the right clothes? Are you examining, I testified this week. What are you examining? The Bible says you need to examine yourself whether ye be in the faith. So that's what we're going to talk about. Are you in the faith? Can somebody give me an example of being in the faith? Having a strong belief and living that, and living that strong belief. Amen. Anybody else? Pretty much almost put a nail in it. Trust in God. Amen. Obedience. All this is the same thing. Amen. What's got back here? Doing his will. Lining up with the word. All of this is is getting in in the faith. Because he said, that's what you have to examine yourself to see if you're doing these things. And if you and when you know when you we do examination, I mean we we talking about digging deep. We not a surface examination, amen. And from time to time, we have to just make sure we are lined up with the Word of God. You know, every once in a while, you got to get your car checked. I don't care who you are. Every once in a while, it, you, you could see me driving my car, but you just don't know if I let that steering wheel go out, make a hard left, because my alignment is off. You look like my car going good, but I'm holding that car so tight. And this is where our lives, our lives look good. Our lives look like we doing the right thing. You know, you have some new saints are coming here and think we all got it together. Because of how we look, how we present ourselves. But if they just don't know, we holding that steering wheel tight. So our car just won't veer off to the left. And every once in a while, you got to get your alignment check. It, 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 ain't, it ain't nothing wrong with your car. It look good. You can sell it before you buy your car just off of looks. Boy, you don't know what you're getting until you try to crank it. So we need to make sure this this is an examination that we have to do on ourselves. Amen? Now, this is this is Lent season. Lent started today. And I looked at television. They got a drive-through Lent going on. You go, to, you go to Starbucks, and if you don't want to get out the car, you roll your window down, they'll slap an X on you. Cross across your head. And what these people do on Lent, these religious folk, what they do, they, 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 they get the 
you know, to crush the X on their forehead. And what they do, they give up something for 40 days. They stop, they stop doing one of their favorite sins just for 40 days. Now, I'm going back. There ain't no power in that. It's just something. And if I can't make 40 days, so be it. And then you got some that would just stop eating meat altogether up until that day. They only eat fish and all that. But the Bible says it's not what goes into a mouth, man's mouth that defiles it. It's what come out. You, you, you can stop eating all you want to. You're still cursing. But see, people got all these different things going on and say they're in the faith. They say they know God. They say they love God. God loved my heart. I go to church. I even preach and curse. All these different things going on. But Paul wants us to make sure that we examine ourselves according to the way that the Bible wants us to examine ourselves. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 11 and 28. We're just going to hit a few things. Then we're going to go and break down that scripture. Because that scripture got some points in it. We read it, but there's five strong points that we got to slow down and make sure we're examining ourselves. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians 11, 28 through 30. Read the Bible. But, but let a man examine himself. Let a man, let a woman examine himself. Check yourself out real good. When we uh, take our cars to get an inspection, they examine that thing. Make sure it passes. They don't want you on the road. If, you, if your car is not good, you're endangering everybody else. So in, in the church, we need to examine ourselves to make sure we don't get nobody else off track. Because people watching us, people looking at us. And these new saints and some of these old saints are going to say, well, if this brother doing it, he's been here 15 years, that must be the way it goes. So we need to make sure we examine ourselves. Read. And so... Let him eat of that bread Read. and drink of that cup. We're talking about, we're talking about Christ. We're talking about his body. Read. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily uh -huh. eateth and drinketh damnation. Now, when you examine yourself and you decide I'm good anyway, I don't have to change. And you see something is wrong. And when we examine ourselves, we know when we're off. Nobody got to tell us. That's why he said examine yourself, because I can't really tell you you off. You know you off. And when you off, it's up to you to immediately correct yourself. Check yourself out. You know when you done fell off. You know some of us ain't tried to fast in months. Months. We just gave up on fasting. Just gave up. If, I, if nobody announces it, well, I guess I'll do it. Tomorrow since you announced it. But no, that should be in you. We shouldn't have to tell you our fast days no more. So you need to, you need to examine it. Get into it. If you're going to be part of something and you want to grow strong and be part of what God wants you to be, you got to follow the steps and the procedures. Weight lifters are not going to get all those muscles constantly picking up five-pound weights. They're going to have to eventually get up to the 50s, to the 100s. They got to 300s. They got to, they got to, you got to start getting stronger. But you're not going to get stronger eating all you want to all day, every day. Read. Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. And when you start just taking communion because you feel like everybody else taking communion, the Bible says you eateth and taketh damnation unto yourself. Everything we do is self-instructive, self-inflicted. Nobody's doing anything to you. So quit blaming people. When you examine yourself, examine what you did to yourself. Can't nobody do nothing to you to make you do nothing. We don't make nobody join. We don't make nobody stay. When you make a promise to God that you're going to do this, that's you between you and God. So quit, quit. Get it out of your mind when you do these examinations that I'm doing this because somebody else making me do it. They can live like the devil all they want, but you got to live saved. Quit blaming. Quit saying I, I live with somebody at my house that's not doing right. No, you still do right. I don't care how bad your boss is, how much they curse. You still got to do the job you're supposed to do and still get that boss respect. Or find you another job. Read. Not discerning the Lord's body. Not discerning the Lord's body. Read. For this cause. For this cause. For because you decide you want to eat and know you're not right. Read. Many are we. Many. Many. Some, that's why I don't care how much you come down to this prayer line and get prayed for. You can't get delivered. Many are weak. 
because they decide they want to do something that's not conducive to the word. You, you're going against the word. You didn't examine yourself and know you're not living right. And you're still taking communion. I'm talking about examining yourself. Get, get, get everybody else out your picture. Act like you're the only person in this room. Read. And sickly among you. Then some of us are sick. Some of us are weak. We just, we always just sluggish. Don't know why I can't get around. I'm taking my vitamins. I can't. Then when some of us just downright sick, throwing up, headache, hurting all the time, all the medicine you go to, the doctors pumping this stuff in you, pumping that stuff in you, you still can't get well. And what else happens? And many sleep. Many die. Because you refuse to examine yourself. The Bible said, he said in the first scripture, examine yourself. Let a man examine himself. This is real. And we have to do this on a daily basis. You can't say I was did good yesterday and then, and then don't worry about yourself today. You're going to get so far behind, it's going to be ridiculous. I just said Sunday, you got to do it hour by hour. 30 minutes by 30 minutes, whatever intervals you need. To keep yourself going. Somebody, but some people might need it every 15 minutes. Hey, I live saved these last 15 minutes. And then you do 15 more minutes. Whatever you got to do to build yourself up that you know, hey, I'm living saved for a good half a day. And then I have a problem the second half of the day. But you got to start keeping this thing in your mind. I'm not falling to the way. So I'm not going to give in to the devil. I'm not going to live any kind of way. I'm going to judge myself accordingly. And I'm going to be hard on myself. Can't nobody be harder on me than I am. You got to want to live safe. This thing just don't happen by itself. I'm trying to tell you, you got people that go to church and think once I get a right hand of fellowship and sit in that chair and join the choir, I'm saved. Then they go and do what they want to do and you can't tell them no difference. So what we finna do, we finna break down 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. So the first thing Paul asked him to do was to examine themselves. Examine themselves. Why did Paul ask them to examine themselves? So we got to go back up to verse 3. Because here the problem is these people was jumping on Paul. Read verse 3. Since ye. Since you. Seek a proof of Christ. Since you want to know about Christ. Speaking in me. If you want to know if Christ has uh, uh, made me the pastor. Since you want to know if Christ gave me my position. Read. Which to you, Lord, is not weak, but is mighty in you. See, Christ, Christ, is, Christ is working on you too. He's not weak. He's working on you too. Read. For though he but, was crucified. But though he was crucified. Through weakness. Through weakness. Yet he lived, he liveth by the power of God. What, what, what Paul is saying, since you are demanding proof of Christ speaking through me. Because sometimes that's what people do to the preacher. Well, you just a preacher. Paul said, so you need to examine yourself. Quit trying to examine if God gave me the message. Examine yourself. Whether ye be in the faith because what happens is and because they was just they was jumping on paul paul had to defend himself almost through this whole second chapter uh, book of corinthians they 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 said you didn't walk with jesus you weren't one of the original apostles so paul had to continue to put it down go back to second corinthians 10 and 10 because paul had to say look man i i, I don't care what y'all think i don't care what's going on in your mind i am an apostle i am sent by god second corinthians 10 and 10 and then read 11 for his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful. Now, now when he write us, he's he strong. He, when, when he write letters, read. But his bodily presence is weak. He ain't, he's not impressive when we look at him. A little old man coming in here. To, read. And his speech contemptible. He ain't, you know, when he talk, we, he really ain't saying nothing. Ain't nobody scared over his voice. You know, they talking about Paul. This is the Corinthians church. This, he then came to them and he'd been trying to tell them to live right. This is that old church that want to fornicate and do all this other stuff. Read. Let such an one think this, that such as we are in word. Paul said, I tell you what, you could think what you want to think. Such as we are in word, to what we uh, write, read. 
by letters. When we write you these letters, read. When we are absent. When we not come, when we not here. When I write you a letter and I'm not here, pause it, think about that, read. Such will we be also indeed when we are present. Pause, strong pause. I'm going to be the same person that wrote these letters. These letters hard, I'm going to be hard when I get here. So pause, you examine yourself. Leave me alone. Don't worry about me. I'm all right. You the one need to get yourself right if you want to go to heaven. A man must examine himself. And the number one reason we need to examine ourselves because we can get deceived. When we don't examine ourselves, well, we can get deceived by everyday life. I'm doing good. Everything's right. My bills are paid. See, we, get, we, we let our, our, our worldly stuff dictate if we're walking in the faith. My lights is on. Everybody's eating good. My kids acting right. Does that mean you in the faith? We got to be careful about how our lives going. Your life could be going great and you'd be out of the faith. Then your life could be haywire and you could be deep into the faith. That do, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. It doesn't matter how you feel. It's how you live in. Right. Acts 17 and 11. We got to make sure we stay and and, and examine ourselves. Like I say, nobody else can tell you if you're in the faith. And don't let nobody tell you that you're not in the faith. You living up to jammed up to the word like you know how and then something in your life is going astray. Don't let nobody else tell you you must have been doing something wrong like like Job friends, jacking them up. What you didn't do, what you didn't do, go on, tell us, confess, open up your mouth. No, I ain't did nothing. This is just what God has let me go through. This is my season of going through. And if you don't think you're going to have a season of going through, keep on living. You're going to have a season of going through. And that don't mean you're not in the faith. Read the Bible. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Uh-huh. And that they receive the word with all readiness. You know what receive the word with all readiness is? I mean, when the word comes and the word finds you and you're not where the word say you are, you need to shift. You need to move. You can't be just so stubborn that when the word comes, you're not ready to move where the word says to move. What's your word? Adjust? Is that your word, Paul? Adjusting? Adjustable? We got to learn how to adjust. We got to be able to flow with the word. The word, God word is living. It's not just no straight word. It's just like we robots. No, the word for you might be a little different to me at this time in my life. So you got to be able to flow with the word. You got to with all readiness of mind. Your mind got to say, whatever the Lord want me to do, I'm ready. You can't be so stiff and say, it's not my season. No, it's your, if the God say turn to move, I don't care what's going to move. Read. And search the scriptures daily. Uh huh. Open up your Bible every day. That's how you're going to stay in the faith. Don't wait on Sunday morning, Wednesday night. Man, you ain't going to no, make it. You're going to fall to the wayside. Sunday night. Most people don't come back on nights anyway. So they're just Sunday morning saints. Get you a Bible. Study the Bible. Search the scriptures daily. God, show me what's in here for me for the day. Give me this day my daily bread. That's what I've been asking God for, just my daily bread. I don't need tomorrow's bread, Lord. I need today's bread. Because if I know I can live saved today, tomorrow you're going to give me the bread for tomorrow. I need my manna from on high. I need my daily supply. Sometimes we get too far ahead of God, wanting God to do this. God said, if you just live saved, 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 you'll run into what I got for you. But you got to constantly live saved. What it is, if you, you see, if God show you everything he's going to give you down the street, man, you're going to run to it. You ain't going to be patient enough. You're going to try to make that thing happen in, before it's time. So search the scriptures uh, uh, daily. Read. Whether those things were so. Whether those things were so. Because you're going to have to make sure you do these things. You just can't... Um, Say that you are a living holy and living. Say, no, you, you got to do it. James 1 and 22. You, you have to do it. You just can't talk this thing out. And that's what we got a lot of people now that are just talking holy, talking righteous. They done, the church lingo is all over the place now. The church dance. Everybody got to dance. Everybody got to shout. Everybody got a tongue. Look at their life. Or they, look at the, they life, you cannot fake the Holy Ghost. 
The real Holy Ghost, you go, you want to live it. You don't slip up and cuss if you got the Holy Ghost. James 1 and 22. But, but be ye doers of the word. Be ye doers, be ye doers, be ye doers of the word. Uh-huh. And not hearers only. You listen, you know what some people will do? Some people will say, I know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I know every scripture. I know every verse. I know everything, but they're not living none of it. And then them same people will come in here and argue with us, telling us what the Bible say. They tell us about Greek, Roman, Hebrew, whatever, and they ain't living nothing. Don't get impressed by those people. Look at a person's lifestyle. Can they come to church on time? Are they coming to Sunday school? Are they paying tithes? Them the people you want to mark. You don't want to mark nobody who just because they got a good memory. Some people can remember anything. And that's all it is. That's memorizing. This ain't going to do you no good. You're going to have to live this. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. Galatians 6, 3 and 4. We're talking about examining yourself. Digging deep. Because some people, they just think they just just so much better than others because they can read and quote and they could just pop off scriptures that are pop and then you follow them out there. They'll fire up a cigarette, got girlfriends, and they married. But just because he, this is what we got to be careful of is because the person could bring the word. You got you, you to gotta try the spirit by the spirit. You got to see if they actually live in it. You got a lot of people that can went to jail and they know this book better than the words of this book better than most people. Yeah. They ain't had nothing but time. They ain't had nothing but time. They've been there 50 years. They, boy, they know this book. They have read it 16 times. But they ain't living none of it. Read Galatians. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing. Now examine yourself. Now if you think in yourself to be something. And you know you're not nothing. What that means is it, it means you're talking more than you're doing. It means you're bragging about yourself doing things that you're not actually doing. You say you can do this, but you actually can't do it. If a man think himself, read. For if a man think himself to be something read. when he is nothing, uh -huh. he deceiveth himself. I told you, you got to examine yourself to make sure you're not even trying to fool yourself. Some people just come to church and think that's all I have to do. They won't get in nothing. They won't, they won't be no service to God's order in the, in the church. They don't want to join the usher boy choir. They just sit because it's going to cost them something. Yeah, yeah, you you just yeah, you're gonna have to come to Sunday school. You're gonna have to get there on time. You got choir rehearsal, choir rehearsal two or three times a month. And then depending on how many choirs you're in, you got to come. You know, brotherhood meetings, but you don't want to get into nothing because you just want to get here on Sunday morning. You're gonna have to grow in this thing. This thing, the more you're around the saints, talking to the saints, being around saved people, that's the more it rubs off on you. And you come to church on Sunday morning and just see people and shouting and all that, and you go home and don't see them again to a couple of more Sundays. That ain't helping you. That's not going to help you. You must be around the saints. Being in the brotherhood, being in the choir, those things was beneficial to where I am now. It was beneficial being around brothers that, 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 that held me accountable. Sister Rogers will hold you accountable in that choir. You're not going to get away with it. Don't think you can just slip up there because they're singing a song you already know. No, she's going to give you that look and you know it's time for you to go sit down. Because you got to come to rehearsal. Read. But, but let every man prove his own work. Let every man examine his own work. The work you're doing, examine it. Give yourself, give yourself a good examination. You know, in school, we used to have to grade our own papers. Yeah, you know, just a grade your own papers. It don't matter if you give yourself an A and you know you didn't answer the questions right. That don't help you. So it's the same thing with examining yourself. Just because you think you're doing good, you on top. No, it ain't helping you at all. Because at the end of the day, when the, when the real test comes, when the examination comes, when the final comes, we're going to get a final exam. 
You're going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That's your final exam. I don't care how many papers you done graded yourself for A's. That's the test you're going to have to pass. Read. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself then you can alone. Be, then you can say, hey, you know what? I did this thing. I, I, I'm holding down the faith. When you examine yourself good and you can see that you live in what this Bible says, this is the first church I ever came to that I, 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 I found out, you know what? They expect me to live this. I've been to church after church after church after church, and I never got the feeling of I had to live what I learned. And that's what's going on in the world today. These churches don't make these people feel they have to live it. And if you don't feel you have to live it, you're not going to live. You feel you okay. With some of these sermons that you hear on the television and some of these preachers, what they preach, it makes you feel you don't have to change your lifestyle at all. Just come to church. Because when you go shake the deacon's hand, you go have a smoke is all on you, liquor and smoke. We had, a, we had a choir director over there at one of them Baptist churches. That boy could play that organ. But, man, he smelled just like liquor every time we go to choir practice. So I'm trying to stop drinking. I'm weak as well water. I'm back to drinking and coming to choir rehearsal just like he is. But my drinking, I'm going all the way, so I'm, I'm out of the church now. He can still come and perform drunk. So, we, so what we do, we hold each other accountable over here. We live what the Bible say live so that person that comes in and say, hey, no, we ain't letting you off the hook. You can't come in there smelling like cigarettes think we ain't going to say nothing. You can't come in there smelling like liquor think we ain't going to say nothing. Can't come up here with your skirt too high think we ain't going to say nothing. We hold each other accountable in here. And that's what I like about this church. Because what happens is you get to comparing yourself with somebody else. And when you compare yourself with somebody else, you're not examining yourself. You're examining that person and say, I want to be like them. When you examine yourself according to the word, you don't care what nobody else is doing. 2 Corinthians uh, uh, 12, no, 10 and 12. Because this, 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 this a comparison thing is, 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 is um, then turned to be, be, a, be a, a, a hindrance in the church. Everybody want to be like the preacher. Everybody want to be like the deacon. And everybody want to be like the ponytail organ player. I want to sing just like him. And he's twisting all around the church. Then your little boy's looking up to him. Yeah, the little boy's going to look up to him. If we don't stop it, we allow him to get up here on and twist all around and shout and want to be held by the men. No. Second Corinthians 10 and 12 says what? For we dare not make ourselves of the number. Now, we don't dare classify or compare ourselves with somebody else. Read. Or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. Read. But they measuring themselves by themselves. See, when people commend themselves, you can always think you're doing good. I mean, what you, I mean, that's all you know. I, I'm doing good. I don't have to do it. I mean, you get checking off everything. I'm, I'm commending myself. But when you get rebuked by uh, somebody else, it's, uh, here we go. I'm ready to lead the church. You just can't take a uh, constructive criticism. Sometimes it's not even a rebuke. It's just a suggestion. And run you straight up out of here and get you mad. You sit down on God. Because you're commending yourself. I thought I did good. Well, no, you did good, but can we want to change a little bit? I don't think I need to change nothing. And this is the way people mentality get in the church. This is why Paul is examining yourself whether ye be in the faith. Are you in the faith? When you're in the faith, you're going to go by leadership. You're going to follow orders. There's a chain of command. Read. And comparing themselves among themselves. Uh huh. Told you when you when you measure yourself by themselves, compare themselves among themselves. Man, I need to compare myself to the Word of God. This is my measuring stick. You can't be my measuring stick. I can't commend myself either. If it's the Word of God tell me to do it, if the Word of God said I need to come up, I need to come up. Why? Are not wise. It's not wise to do that. You ain't going to make it. You're going to fall to the wayside. Because one person weight may not even be a problem to you. Everybody don't have the same weights. 
But everybody will, will fall into sin if you keep carrying the weight. Amen. The second thing Paul said to do is to test yourself. Prove yourself. The car dealership, when they make cars, they don't just take them off the, 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 the assembly line and throw them on the showroom floor. Man, don't tell me you have wrecks and all kinds of stuff. They test those cars. They see where they can handle the weather. They, they put them in cold weather, 20 degrees below zero. Make sure that car don't just fall apart when it gets too cold. They put them in 120 degree temperatures to make sure it can take the heat. They put crash test dummies in the car and run them in the walls and side slip and turn them over to make sure that you ain't going to kill yourself when you get in the car. They try to make it as safe as possible. So we got to test ourselves before we run into some heat. Somebody going to put some heat on you. Are you going to start cursing? Somebody give you the cold shoulder. What you do? Give them the cold shoulder back? When your life starts falling apart, things start crumbling, you going to do run out of the church? You got to test yourself to make sure you can hold up to these things. These things are coming. And if you're not in the word, if you're not in the faith, if you're not rooted and grounded in this word, you ain't going to make it. You're not going to make it. You got to search these scriptures daily. Lord, give me the strength. Tighten me up, God. That's why you don't have every, that's why these cheeks are empty. They, they couldn't hold it. It's too much for them. They wouldn't, they didn't pass the test. The cars fell apart. Then sometimes the cars, no matter, no matter how much they test, still some things happen. That's what they do. They have a recall. They got to bring them back in. All that testing they did, it still didn't work. And sometimes our life, we do everything right, but then we do something that falls apart. You know what we got to do? We got to repent. Lord, let me do this all over. Lord, forgive me. When you fall into sin, when you fall outside the will of God, when you, even if it's not sin or outside the will of God, if God told you to do something, you didn't repent immediately. Yeah, they want you to bring them cars in now. If you don't bring it in now, we don't we put it all across the, off, across the uh, airways. Bring these cars back. Yeah. And if anybody don't bring it back, you're on your own now. We told you to bring it back. You go out there and your steering wheel stop turning and you run off the bridge, we told you to bring it back. So there's a recall. You can't just continue to operate. You can't continue to do the things that you want to do when, when, when the manufacturer, when, when, you done, when you done went against the manufacturer warranty. And this is the manufacturing warranty. When, the, when you go outside of this, this book tells us we can have everything. We can be the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. But you got to continue to live according to the warranty. And when you want all the benefits, you want everything that goes with it. You want your windows open and everything. But you don't want to live right. Lamentations 3 and 40. There are some things that we, I read that one. Let us search and try our ways. Let us search and try them. Let us search and prove them. And turn again to the Lord. When you find yourself outside the will of God, you have to turn again to the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 and 22 says, prove all things. Test all things. Don't just run in. And that's why I tell everybody, slow your life down. Just don't jump into stuff. Sometimes somebody asks you a question, say, well, let me think about it. Before you sign a contract, say, I, I get back with you in a couple of days. Well, they're going to be gone. Well, okay, I don't need it. Let me think about it. Because pressure sales will get you, man. Pressure sales will have you broke. You would be in so much debt and then that stuff ain't no good. But you sit around and go home and say, you know what? I really don't even need that. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearances of evil. This is how you test yourself. Can you stay away from the evil things? When it comes, can you not go to it? Is it still drawing you? Is it still attracting you? The things that you say you delivered from, the things that you say God has set you free from. If that stuff is still pulling at you, you got a ways to go. You got to get on your knees. You got to fast. You got to do the whatever it takes. This is why you tell examine yourself. The third thing he says, do you not know yourselves? Do you not know your own self? Don't you know what's going on with you? Don't you know your weak points? 
Don't you know where you don't need to go? Don't you know where you don't need who you don't need to talk to? Don't you know what you don't need to watch on television? These things are pulling you into evilness. Certain things somebody else could watch, you just can't. Yeah, you don't need to be watching certain shows with all your scenes going on them, steamy scenes, foul mouth scenes. Especially if you were one of the ones that love to curse. Man, this thing you know words gonna start building up in your mind and you're gonna have to hold them all back. Now you gotta fight them back. Because you was a cursor from old from back in the day. And then you all you're hearing is cursing and you're all the old Cat Williams and all the old dirty mouth people, the Kevin Hart's, all these people talking. Oh man, that stuff will get in your system and in your spirit, and you're gonna have to you're gonna have to bind it. But if you stay away from it, you ain't got to bind, leave it alone. No, you know yourself, you know what you need to stay away from, don't touch that, move from. Because you know why? Because your body is not yours. You're bought with a price. You, don't, you, you belong to God. Yeah. Oh, we sing the songs too. I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am. But then there we go. If you're going to give yourself away so he can use you, you got to get rid of yourself. That means you got to give up the things that you really like. And everything that you like don't have to be a sin. This is where we, the saints are losing it. It ain't a sin. But it's keeping you from growing. It's stunting your growth. You can't get up no higher. You won't pray like you want to pray. It's keeping you from coming to the house of the Lord. Oh, it's not a sin, but it's a heavy weight. Yeah, yeah and you got to let that thing go. Cut it. Then you'll find yourself praying and fasting and coming to church. You ain't even miss that thing after two. You know what? Some of the stuff you let go, you ain't even miss it after a couple of days. After a couple of days, that thing is out your psyche. But as long as you, my mind is set up, I got it programmed on television, and I'm going to sit here and watch three hours worth of it. That's why I stopped watching sports. I told you I had to get I had to get rid of sports. In my household, no, I don't watch no none. I don't watch basketball, baseball, football. I don't watch none of it. And I used to watch all of it. I told you I used to, if I didn't go to sleep, if I didn't wake up and my television wasn't saying dun 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 dun, dun something was wrong. It's gonna have to be on Sports Center. I, I mean, if I wake, I got to put I, I put it back on and go back to sleep. But it need to be on there. Now, I don't, I don't even care. I don't even know who's in the playoffs. I don't know nobody's record. I don't know nothing. And it don't even bother me. And I can't imagine that even coming into me. I used to know, like I said, I used to know all the football players' birthday. I know Charles Barkley's birthday, Michael Jordan's birthday. I, this is crazy. Then I have problems finding the scripture. So I got hey, that's That's a weight. It ain't no sin. It's a weight. It's holding me back. I can't get no higher in God because I got too much of the world stuck in me. So once I start filtering that stuff out, now I can remember some of these scriptures. Do you know yourself? Do you know who you are? Do you know what you need to get rid of? The fourth thing, we're we moving on. Um, do you know that Jesus Christ is in you? This is how you examine yourself. Now, if you examine yourself in Jesus Christ, and then you know you got to get saved. Let's get that together. We talking to he talking to the saints. Hey, you ought to know that Jesus is in you. So, if Jesus is in you, you have a certain amount of power that should be in you. All these things that are bothering you just should not bother you, especially when you get a certain age. Listen, some of this stuff we're going on our third and fourth time seeing it, and it still bothers us. Life is just a cycle. It didn't happen, we got through it. It didn't happen, we get through it. And why come every time we come back, we fall apart? We didn't got through it the last two times, the last three times. So I, I found out, you know what, I don't even let that stuff bother me. Losing jobs, getting behind on bit that stuff right there, that's not going to bother me no more. Because those things right there is taking you away from God. What it's doing, the devil is putting fear into you. And what you do, you're losing your trust. 
Because we have to trust God. And when we start fearing and worried about how things are going to get paid and how things are going to work out, we have lost our trust in God. Uh-huh. We have to have faith. We ha- is it in you? It's the faith that God wants you to have. Is it in you? And if you find yourself always wondering and wearing and trying to figure things out, that's going down the line. God said, I'm going to give you the day stuff. Handle the day stuff. I got you enough stuff you got to deal with today. You don't want to work on the day stuff. You want tomorrow stuff. But you know what's going on? The only way you're going to get there is with the power of the Holy Ghost. It is the Holy Ghost that makes the difference. I, I, I came to this church and I, I never even knew nothing about the Holy at all. I was 38 years old, and I don't even know if I ever heard the word, honestly. I think I've heard people use the Holy Spirit one or two times. But as far as the Holy Ghost, actually, I can't, rem- I can't say that I've been in any church that said anything about it. And I had joined numerous churches. Like I told you, I had three different choir robes in my closet at one time. Because I thought when you join the church, you get in the choir, you're going to go to heaven. You shake the preacher hand, you sit in the chair, get in the choir. That's it. Then when I got here, I found out about the Holy Ghost. And when I found out about the Holy Ghost, I didn't know how, what it was going to do. I heard people speaking in tongues. I didn't understand. Well, everybody don't have to speak in tongues. So, but I, I want, it intrigued me. I said, well, Lord, I need that because I was told, we're talking about to the back. You got to get filled with the Holy Ghost. You got to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And I thought, well, no, I don't. I could kill Lee Teen to live this life and live it saved without it. And I find myself back out there doing the same thing in a worse off state. And then I said, I got to get this. Because I wanted to live for God. It was God had a calling on me. God said, you, you can't do it without it. And I made up in my mind, I'm going to get it. And that's when God separated me from my environment. Sometimes, listen, sometimes we'll say that I don't need to go to the rehab. I don't need to go to these different places. God, the rehab didn't do nothing for me. It was the separation. So God could talk to me. Long as you're in your environment. That's why God told Abraham to get away from your people. I need to talk to you. That's why he pulled Paul away, took him on the backside. That's why Jesus went away for 40. Everybody had to separate themselves. You can't be hanging around everybody and think you God going to talk to you. You got to get by yourself. Jesus went off apart from the, from the disciples to pray by himself. We don't like being by ourselves because we got to deal with ourselves. We don't like ourselves. When you don't like yourself, you want everybody else around you so you can deal with somebody else instead of face the fact you don't want to examine yourself. Because when you by yourself and you ain't got nobody to blame, then you get to get the real you. That's how you examine yourself. Get in your car one day. Get by yourself for a few hours. And see how itchy and nervous you get. You need people. Because so God going to start dealing with you when you by yourself. That's why you're at the house by yourself. You, you're looking out the window. You're walking. You're pacing. Because God's going to start working on you. You don't want to just humble yourself and submit yourself to God. You can feel him working. So when I went off and I, I went find myself, I didn't know nobody. So I'm in my room and God worked me over. That, I've never had that happen to me. Then all of a sudden it took one little easy word. The man said, all, somebody, all y'all got uh, on, this, uh, on this dope, or on this uh, alcohol because something is missing in right here. God just spoke to me like never. He said, I'm missing in your life. It was easy to receive once I got separated from the people, from what was keeping me bound. That wasn't, uh, that, that people didn't do nothing. I had heard that message over and over and over. But until you get set, get ready, if you don't know Jesus Christ is in you, you're going to have an issue. You're going to always have, a, have an excuse. You're always blaming somebody else. Acts 8, 14, and 7, 14 through 17. You got to understand it's the power of the Holy Ghost. Once the Holy Ghost gets in you, it gives you, it gives you power to resist. It gives you power to live right. It gives you a boldness. Acts 8, 14 through 17. Amen. Read. Now, when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, uh-huh. 
heard that Samaria had received the word of God. Read the Bible. They sent unto them Peter and John. Now listen, they received the word of God was there. That's what's going on in a lot of these churches. People are preaching the word. It's the word is most of these churches getting the word. They're getting good preaching. They're getting good doctrine. They're getting all of this. Read. Who, when they were come down, prayed for them. And, and, and these apostles prayed for them. Read the Bible. That they might receive the Holy Ghost. See, you, the word without the Holy Ghost is only going to last so long. It's a quick high. It gets you to a point where, okay, you know what? I need to, it, 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 it cleanses you. The Bible says you're clean through the word. The word kind of cleanses you and gets your mind back straight, but... You can't live this thing without the Holy Ghost. It's just not going to last. It's a temporary fix. But you, And if you think you're going to heaven strictly off the word without the Holy Ghost, and you think you're going to live without the Holy Ghost 20 years, you ain't going to make it. You, you have to have the Holy Ghost. Quit trying to live without the Holy Ghost. If you know you don't have the Holy Ghost, seek it. Get on your knees at home. If you don't want to get in, get it here, come down to this altar. I can't, I'm telling you, don't worry about what nobody say. I tell people all the time, come down and get the Holy Ghost. Once you get the Holy Ghost, you got the power. You don't have to worry about dope and liquor and women and men. That stuff is gone. He get rid of stuff that you didn't even know you was doing. You look around and say, I don't even do that no more. I ain't cursed. I ain't, you ain't even asked for that. Only thing you want to do is just stop getting high. All the thing you want to do is stop having sex. Next thing you know, you done stopped everything. Read. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Uh huh. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. See, the Holy Ghost wasn't falling on none of them. I'm telling you, we got churches that, and, and I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. The Holy Ghost ain't falling in none of these places. I hadn't lived it, it would be hard for me to tell you this, but I joined these churches and I saw these pastors, these cussing and smoking pastors. Went to one of them house, oh man, you had to break through the break through the living room like this just to get in there. It just smelled like smoke. Cigarette, you go to his office, he got, got liquor and smoke. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is real, it cleans you up. It cleans you up. You ain't got, and, and you can live freely. You ain't got worry about. You ain't got worry about being like R. Kelly and all them. All your sins piling back up on you, and you get to blaming everybody else. He needs should examine himself. A long time ago, read. Then laid they their hands on them. Then they got hands laid on them. Uh huh. Read. And they received the Holy Ghost. And they received the Holy Ghost. This is what I'm talking about. That, that right there gets me fired up when I see somebody get the Holy Ghost. Because I know that's the power of God that then came into them. And I know they can live that thing now. Yes, what I preach is keep coming to church, getting the word, but seek the Holy Ghost. Joining church going to take you so far. It's just going to take you so far. The fifth and last thing. He said, he said, if you uh, uh, um, don't know that Jesus Christ is in you, accept ye be retrobates. Except you be disqualified. Except you be trifling, throw to the side, unworthy, cast away, disapprove, unacceptable. All these things is what happen if you don't know Jesus Christ. If you just stop, if you stop examining yourself, if you don't understand that Jesus Christ lives in you, if you don't know yourself, people can know themselves. But it'll be a sad thing to go to hell from the pews. That, that, that's a sad thing to go to hell from the pews. Romans 1 and 28. Amen. Read. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. You know what? This is the problem when people hear, but they don't want to retain it. They don't, you, you hear it. You write it down. You take notes. You buy the CDs. You buy the DVD. But then when you get outside, you don't want to retain it in your knowledge. That's why I'm telling you, live life one hour at a time. You can retain it. Just to slow your life down and say, I want to make sure I'm living for God. And those messages will come back. Don't fill your mind up with all that garbage on television, all these musics and all this other stuff. And what it's going to do is going to flush the word out your head. 
But the more words you get in and keep it in, you won't fall into these situations, all these traps and things. They won't retain God in their knowledge. Read. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Listen, God said, I will give you over. If you don't keep me in your knowledge, keep me in your mind. If you act like I don't deserve your uh, 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 life, I will turn you over to a reprobate mind. And what? To do those things which are not convenient. And you can do the things which I don't want you to do. Everything that you want to do, do it. Do it till you're satisfied. Whatever it is. Just do it. Uh, go on and do it. That's what he said. Go on and do it. Whatever. God is through. And, and then the word, then he hardened up your heart like Pharaoh. And the word never penetrates. You can't get saved. No, People think they can get saved when they want to. You better come when you feel God tugging. You better come when you feel God tugging. Everybody don't get the same chances. Quit looking. That's what I'm saying. Don't compare yourself by somebody else. They got 12 chances. You might only get six. You might only get three. Quit comparing yourself. Quit measuring yourself by Pastor Brigham. Oh, he said he went down 12. I'm just on 10. No, you'll be it. Saul, that's all. You can't be mad. Uh -uh. You... That's it. Quit comparing yourself to other people. When God call you, come down. Get yourself together. Titus 1 and 16. Now when we read this scripture, we got to have a little understanding about 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Because now when you see it, you understand what you're reading. Because a lot of times we just quote it and then be through with it. No, I need you to understand. First Titus 1, 16 says what? They profess that they know God. There are a lot of people that tell you they know God. I know God. God lives in me. I, 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 I'm, I'm a child of God. With a cigarette in their hand and cussing, shacking, fornicating, dope smoking. They profess they know God. Read. But in works, they deny him. But by their lifestyle, how they living, the things they doing, the places they going. If you know God, you ain't got no business in no bar, no strip joints, bingo halls, casinos. I don't care. I don't care if they do have the best soda pop over there in that liquor store. You need to go find out where else they sell it. Get it offline. Order it or something. Yeah, Amazon to bring it to the house. They bring everything. They bring car parts. They'll bring you a soda pop. And you in that liquor store for to get some liquor, what you in there to get. Yeah, you don't let this kind of stuff draw you and pull you. We got, if, if it appears evil, shun the very appearance of it. Read. Being abominable. Being abominable. And disobedient. Dis there we go with that word. Disobedient. Disobedient. That's the way you know you're in the faith when you can follow the, uh, the ordinance of God. you in the faith when you can follow the scriptures. Read. And to every good work, reprobate. And every good work, reprobate. One more scripture, then we're going to close the book. Hebrews 6, 7 and 8. Are you in the faith? After the day, you need to ask your question. Am I, am I in the faith? I'm going to examine myself according to what I learned tonight. I'm going to examine myself to the scripture. I want to make sure that I'm walking upright with God. I want to make sure God is satisfied with my life. If God ain't satisfied with your life, you're not in the faith. No matter what nobody else says, somebody else could tell you you're doing good. Don't be listening to the man. You examine yourself. You know you got some making up to do. You know you're not doing everything. Hebrews 6, 7 and 8 says what? For the earth... Which drinketh in the rain uh -huh. that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. Receiveth blessing from God, read. But, but that which beareth thorns, that which beareth thorns, uh huh, and briars, and briars is rejected. Is rejected. You don't want God to reject you. Read. And is nigh unto cursing. And you are near unto cursing. Read. Whose end. Whose end. The very end. That last test you take. The final examination. Is what's happening. 
is to be burned. Is to be burned. After all your living, after all your sacrifice, and after all your choir rehearsals, and paying your tithes, and all the things you've done, and you still wind up short. The Bible said that the righteous is going to scarcely be saved. Those who are living, I'm talking about everything according to the word. The Bible said they're going to barely make it in. Where should a sinner and an unrighteous? Where, where are they going to find them? Where are they going to find Where are they going to appear? Where, where, they, not, they ain't going to be nowhere close. The Bible said hell has enlarged itself without measures. Making wings, stretching. It was for the devil and his and, and, and his angels, the fallen angels. But man decide they want to be a disobedient. And God said, I will make room for you. Now, the devil ain't expanding hell. God is the one making the room. The devil ain't got no kind of power for all this. Now, you making your own reservation. You want reservations for hell? God will make sure he'll find you a spot. But you got to examine yourself. Be honest with yourself. This is what we don't do as people. We're not really honest with ourselves as hard as we are on other people. Be honest with yourself and say, am I living what God wants me to live? Am I studying? Am I fasting? Am I praying? What, I know I'm falling up short. So since you know all these things, what you going to do about it? If you don't do nothing about it, you know what your result's going to be. But if you start just changing your life and falling on your knees and asking God to give me the strength, cut off that television. Sometimes you just got to get rid of stuff. If you can't cut it off, get rid of it. You ain't going to die without a television for a few weeks. Oh, I need my television. That's how I go to sleep. Well, cut the radio on. Do something. Sometimes it takes drastic measures to get your breakthrough. To get you through the point where God needs you to be. I told you I had to go to Florida. I got on an airplane and went to Florida. I don't know nobody in Florida. It took drastic measures. And it worked. Are you in the faith? Everybody standing to your feet.